बहुत से लोगों को हम बताइए क्वेश्चन तो सर यहाँ पर मैं देखा कमेंट्स हेलो गुड आफ्टरनून गुड आफ्टरनून व्यूअर्स can say that if you have any questions for now we can you can माइक तो है Essentially, this session, you know, we want to uh, answer some of your questions if you have. That is number one. Uh, and uh, you know, if we could solve even a problem or two, if we have, uh, if you if you have some questions related to that. If you have some questions, we'd like to answer that first. First, we'd like to answer if you have some questions. In person, come back. Hmm. Any question? If you have tried to solve some of those assignments and preparing for the final, um, I mean, exam. So if you have some questions, we would like to answer them because there are a lot of numericals in this uh, course. It's uh, you know numerical oriented. Two questions, of course, we saw in the comments. One of them was. Uh, what is the scope of green building in India? Well, uh, the scope is very much there. There are professionals who are practicing green building, uh, you know, rating and as well as uh, 
they're, they're, you know, they're, they're basically using some softwares, maybe design also, yes. Some people might be trying to do design, but largely intuitively. So the whole idea of this course is that uh, you don't prepare to do things intuitively, rather you look into the basic physics behind that and try to do it. So that's related to green building. And uh, the other aspects is, of course, uh, the lighting and acoustic design. Now, uh, that's, uh, of course, uh, if, you're a, you know, uh, like if you do a job, for example, noise control, there are a lot of work being done. Sometimes, I mean, I, I myself have been doing a number of consultancies related to, uh, sometimes related to, you know, uh, turbine generator noise, because there are, uh, you know, there is maximum level of dB outside the um, boundary of the power plant is fixed, or even outside the outside the turbine generator house has been fixed. So one would like to find that out. Similarly, for some some cases related to some electrical transformer noise and so on. So noise is also one of them. There is a case not with me, but somebody else. I mean, generally the noise from the aircraft landing in Delhi airport. So these are there are issues related to noise, and also as I said, the issue related to green building and things like that. And uh, lastly, of course, the daylighting. This is uh, this is related again. It also goes together with energy efficient building design. Now a lot of people use software to do that. Now unless you know the basic fundamentals, I'm using software like a black box is not the best thing. So that was the idea about uh, answer to the two queries. That have been put on sometimes as comments. Everyone is finding the acoustic transmission of a straw board. Well, finding it, I mean, the value, or I'm not sure value will be what value one can look from net or even from some books, uh, straw board, one can look into literature to find out. Uh, I'm not sure in uh, the Indian, Indian Standard Code, uh, where are the code? 49, 49 something, 29 or some such thing. And noise abutments in buildings that will give some values for something. So straw board, I'm not sure what the value, but uh, how to find this out because straw board is uh, uh, depending upon what is the frequency that you are looking at. Measurement is one thing that can be done, but there are very few laboratories which can actually do it because it needs a special isolation, acoustic isolation of the laboratory. So it has to have NPL can do it perhaps. Similarly, uh, CBRI has some facility, but finding is uh, not you know, you will not find it everywhere, and uh, that is what it is. But values you might find such in the net, you might be able to find it out. Straw board, well, depending upon what it is mass, but there will be some absorption in there because straw board would absorb. So transmission loss is one thing, absorption coefficient will be another thing. And if you are looking for absorption coefficient, average, uh, you know. Uh, NRC, noise reduction, coefficient, or whatever it is. That values, absorption values, I think, is available also in uh, the uh, auditorium code for some of these materials. I think it is 2526. What is the code? 2526 in the acoustic design of auditorium. Uh, I think so. 2526 is the uh, code. So Somebody is asking how 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 can I relate this course to Vastu Shastri? Well, I I mean Vastu is something I am not uh, I cannot answer because it is not scientific. To my understanding, if it is on based on belief that you put your uh, put your uh, put your uh, pillow in a given day side, your life will change. So that cannot be related. But traditional Indian design, Indian practices. Or practices in a given country, any country for that matter, traditional practice, they are they have been based on empiricity. People have developed practice. For example, the you know, like you don't make a house, a west facing house, or uh, you know, long axis should be parallel to uh, mostly you know, like south, north south, spanning along north south direction. So that south is one of the good orientation in this country because we belong from eight to around 30, uh, 32, 33 degree latitude and there 
Well, the long axis should be parallel to north south, south direction. Am I right? Yeah. So that's what my friends also say. And by calculation, also you'll see that. So that has been practiced by people. And also, if you see traditional houses in Kerala, they will differ quite quite you know a bit from that the houses in let us say in uh, in Jalandhar, Punjab or Rajasthan because the climates are different so construction materials they will be different there will be hardly you won't find too many gable roofs house in uh, northern India because the rainfall is much less so traditional practices have been very very good Bastu I don't know anything and I, I personally you know, realize that uh, that uh, you know, changing direction of my house is not going to change my life or my so-called fortune or something. Like that. So therefore, that relationship is not available. But you can always, whatever you feel good, you can analyze it using the physics. We are asking that in green building concept, what would be the noise cancellation principle? Well, actually, in the green building concept, I do not think there's too much of a noise. The noise issue is not being covered too much. But uh, you want to incorporate it, you can always incorporate it. Right? So, uh, I'm not very sure in green rating is there anything related to uh, noise control. But first thing is when you are planning a building for noise, very first thing is that you should keep the noise sensitive areas of the building away from the noise generating maybe the highway or something the distance is one of the things and direction is also an important thing so you know this this is external noise control into the building then you can of course use some sort of absorbers some sort of uh, uh, absorbers you know which was, was it? This? this one for example you know if you have a Sunshade, right? If you have a sunshade, if you have a sunshade, uh, then then uh, then if you have a sunshade or something like that, you can put absorbers here. You can put absorbers here. So any sound coming in, you get reflected, and then enter. So if this is an absorber, if this is an absorber. If this is an absorber, then if this is an absorber, then then you know like the like this is if I is the intensity received here, so this will be simply I zero if I here. It will be I zero multiplied by the absorption coefficient of this absorber. So it could be simply putting something like gunny gunny bag pieces or straw or similar sort of thing or you know decorative. Some sort of absorbing material one can put. Besides, the distance is the main thing because you remember we talked about SPL is equals to PWL plus DI minus 20 log R minus 11. So, distance is very important. External noise control is good, but I do not think in the green building concept there's a maximum value of the noise level. Right? Green rating channel. Any question coming? So, in case of room resonance, what will be the real scenario you're asking? Okay, how okay. to find NX, NY, and Z? Okay. Uh, in case of uh, in case of uh, you know, in case of uh, how do you erase it? Erase, erase. Can I erase it? Okay. See the see the this okay now this goes to the pen. Now basically see the if this is the room and its dimensions are something like this, right? Okay. Okay. Just a minute. So, if you know the formula is actually, we gave some formula. If you have seen, uh, there was a formula given. So, NX, NY, and uh, is it now sharing? Yeah, sharing. Okay. So, right. Something like this. Uh, 
by a saying, not this, okay, maybe it's, no, this is the let me raise it out, it's, right, something like this is fine, so there's a little bit pen, this is sharing now, okay, okay, so this is the room, vertical, mm, This is something like the room. Okay, this is something like the room. Now, there can be resonance along this direction, this direction, as well as, uh, you know, if the source is somewhere up there, so there can be resonance along this direction, this direction, y axis, as well as vertical direction, or combination along the diagonal. So, nx, ny, nz are simple integers, right? So nx, ny, nz are simple integers. So for value, you try, try, you know, just put this nx value equals to zero, ny is equals to. Uh, it was the formula was nx. You know, formula was f is equal yeah, f, f, f is equals to c by two under root nx by a. Yes, let me again use the eraser. It's an option. Nx by uh, nx by a square whole thing, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, this is square actually. ny by b square because otherwise the under root will not come. nz by plus nz by t square. So, you know, this is nx. Now, you put this equals to zero. This equals to 1, this equals to 0, then you get in vertical direction. I mean, y direction, whatever is the y direction. You put this equals to 0, this equals to 0, this equals to 1, then you get the frequency at which the resonance will take place. Right? Frequency, because velocity of sound is the frequency at which. So if you know your frequency, then corresponding the velocity of sound is known in here, 340 meter per second or whatever it is. So this value, you know, NX you choose one because they can only take integer values so choose any one of them what should be the dimension of the room b you can find out take say let's say let's say take, take this equals to zero then this equals to one this equals to zero then you find out this dimension because uh, this is known frequency is known so 500 hertz supposing is a common frequency that is taken in case of auditoriums or you want to do it in 500 thousands so several frequencies you can take and correspondingly you can find out by choosing Two of them zero, third one you can find it. NY you can find it, right? And NY if you choose one, then B you can find it. Similarly, A you can find out. And combinations diagonal you can then check. Once you have found out the uh, ABC, put each one of them one. Then it's the diagonal in the uh, vertical one corner to the at the base level one corner. Complete, you know, complete diagonal, 3D along the three dimensional. Or put any one of them equals to zero, other two equals to one one. Then you get in the other plane, one given plane in what is the uh, you know, frequency or for the same frequency is the resonance of everything. So using the formula you can simplify. There's no complication in this. Just use this formula, you can find it. And if you know the frequency, then and you know your A and B and C, right? Put this equals to zero, this equals to zero, you can find out whether resonance is occurring or not. For your C, put this equals to one or you know this combination. So using this formula. You can find out nx, ny, nz takes only integer values 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. So, usually uh, uh, you can try out with any one of these integer numbers and combinations you can find out where it's occurring. Or not. That's, that's it. Yeah, any more question coming by? Mm. Any, any comment? Mm. No questions only. No questions. Okay, no more questions. Fine. So what we can do is we can solve the problem of to ourselves to help you out. We can solve a problem of problem of uh, you know problem ourselves to help you out. Uh, yeah.
there must be a complete erasing option. Okay. Erase all. So what are the problems that uh, uh, yes. okay right right so uh, you know it's the problem is a large rectangular hall of size 20 meter mm -hmm. There's a question. Yeah, yeah. Okay. In your view, how a successful sound acoustic environment should be? Okay, okay. Where? We'll just ask the question back. Where? Which place? Within an enclosure? Where? Within an enclosure or where? Or outside? Yeah. Outside enclosure means is it auditorium, classroom? Where? Where is it? Which place? The environment, acoustic environment. I mean, in, good. in office place. Okay, office place. Good. Now, office place, you see, office place, if you look at it, there are different types of uh, office planning, depending upon the type of offices. Say, uh, if it is today, of course, you have you don't have cubicles of the kind that you used to have earlier. You have got all the computer desks and things like that. Now, one issue is voice privacy. Noise privacy. If I'm working, I don't want noise to come. So that's normally you have a barrier all around currently. And that leaves uh, noise privacy. So we don't want a noise level from other people who are in conversation to disturb you. So that's about general people. But supposing it is manager at a higher level who would be discussing about like, you know, is a, a personal manager or something like that might discuss about somebody's career promotion or increment and things like that. They might need more privacy. So therefore, it, it, it depends upon, so essentially or the order of around, because this is specified, specified the maximum, maximum permissible noise level in such a moment to do specified around 35 dB, background noise, 40 dB, that should be quite enough, is good. But noise privacy is very important. Because whatever I'm speaking, it should not go to the next people. Also. That's also an important issue in offices. And therefore, there are, of course, uh, active systems which can capture what is the noise level and cancel and things like that. There are active systems, but generally, passively, my noise, whatever I'm saying, it should not go out. So one can design the office accordingly. In an off open office plan, which used to be there earlier, no barrier, nothing, it is all open. So open office plan for drawing, you know, drafting and similar sort of thing earlier good old days. And nowadays, of course, everybody has got a computer, so AutoCAD and things like that. They have the noise level, tolerable noise level should be general tolerable 35, 45 dB or dBA or this order would be tolerable, etc. The other thing is that uh, if it is landscape office, then it is mainly meant for sales and things like that. Each uh, positions are or chair or things like that are placed haphazardly with maybe some trees and things like that. There also the general noise level should be order of around 35, 40 degree. But these are specified quite or very quiet. If you remember, we talked about uh, noise uh, criteria card. You know, NC criteria card sometimes we have talked about. So NC, according to NC criteria card, you can choose how quiet do you want. Right? There's no question. Any other question? Yeah. So let's see. The, let's let's look at one or two problem for helping you out in case you are doing. This can this be protected? Can this be protected? You. Ye, ye sheet project to sit, I guess. Can this problem be predicted? Huh? Yes, sir. We, we are trying to email us. Is it going to be
इसको शेयर करना है बोल सकते हैं अच्छा उसमें दिख जाएगा So I think he will, he will just uh, email you the problem, which says a large rectangular hall of size 20 meter long and 12 meter wide and 6.5 meter in height has a stage centered on 12 meter wall at one end. So you have something like 20 meter, right? 20 meter. 12 meters, so this is 20. This is 12. And uh, uh, there's a you know, six height, of course, is height is h is equal to 6.5 meter. Uh, has a stage centered on the 12 meters. So somewhere here is a stage centered in this one. Right. The floor has a carpet covering laid on concrete. So there's a floor on which there's carpet. And uh, absorption coefficient value is 0 0.37. So this absorption coefficient value is given. Alpha for the floor is given 0.37 for 1 for 1k for 1 kilohertz, right? 1000 hertz frequency. The seating is upholstered leather cover seats with an absorption value of 0.61. So there are seats here. They have a seating arrangement here, seating arrangement here, etc. And they have 0.61 uh, is the for the same frequency. It is 0.61 is the alpha of the seats actually. Capacity is 210. So number of people capacity is 210. Capacity of this space is 210. The side walls and the wall behind the stage is gypsum plaster. So this side is gypsum plaster, etc., etc. And uh, which has got a coefficient of absorption coefficient of 0 0.04. There is a curtain over the rear wall. So there's a curtain here, the rear wall somewhere, right? Curtain over the rear wall, and absorption coefficient for the same is 0 0.75. Assume stage, stage surface area is small compared to the rest of the area. The room is to be used for speech and the specified reverberation is 0.9 seconds. So specified, you know, RT is equals to 0.9 second, 0.9 second, right, for speech. What shall be absorption coefficient of the acoustic tiles, right? Plan to be used over the complete ceiling. So tiles will be used over complete ceiling what is the uh, what is the uh, what is the uh, absorption coefficient of those tiles, right? Uh, okay. So essentially, what is Savant's formula? Savant's formula is, I think we use a notation R T. Yes, yes, that's right. So TR, we are calling it TR or TR. Yeah. Right. Reversion time, we are calling it as TR is the two point. 16B or oh, then right here. So a new page. Let me go to a next new page. 0.16B divided by so T R reverberation time is uh, basically uh, you know total absorption, total absorption, or we have written it uh, total absorption. We have written with S or alpha S alpha. So this is the total absorption. So uh, for for that actually. One of the alpha part is known, you know, S alpha bar is basically is equal to sum of SI alpha I. Now, in this case, this would be for floor, wall, everything. So in case of floor area is how much? 20 into 12 and into 0.37. Plus uh, for the uh, walls, the total wall area, you got to calculate out. How much is the wall area? Wall area would come out to be 12.12 12 into 6.5 and uh, that's the vertical and that should be uh, one wall, two walls like that plus, uh, uh, you know, 20 into 6.5, all right? And, uh, yeah, so this is this is two gypsum board. We have 
I said, this is only one here, right, 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 because, yeah, 12 will be other side. So this is one. This will be uh, two, two, right. So this, this value shall be one. And multiplied by 0 0.04, 0 .04, something like this. Plus, the next next line would be plus, in addition to this, so this would be, well, let's write, add here. So the walls, two walls you have taken. Backside, there's a curtain, and which has got a, 0.75 absorption, so 0.12 into 6.5 into 0.75 plus uh, what is there? The point seats are 210. Now, normally for auditorium, we take two thirds. If you take the full, then we'll take 210. Normally for auditorium design, one can take two thirds. So we take two thirds multiplied by 210 into 0 0.61. So this also get added. And the last one remaining is the ceiling. Which is 20 into 12 into the unknown alpha of the ceiling. And this value should be equal to 0.9. Now, V of the room is known 20 into 12 into 6.5. 6.5. And if you put all these values, S, the, you know, the alpha is the only unknown remaining. So, 0.9 into all this, or 0.9 into alpha ceiling somewhere will come. You can form an equation. And if you solve for this, you get S alpha bar is equal to, you know, to, okay, S alpha bar is equal to, uh, right, so it comes out to be S alpha bar is, you know, if I go to the next page, S alpha bar comes out to be 2, 46.22 plus, uh, 240 is the area of 20 into uh, 12 into alpha of the same. That should be equals to in 2.9, so 246.22 plus 240, 240 alpha C into 0.9 must be equals to 0.16 into 20 into 12 into 6. .9. So only unknown is alpha C, and if you calculate out, it comes out to be 0.130. So calculate alpha C from this, it will come out to be 0.120. So that's the solution of this problem. You know, it will help you if you are interested, you will find the solution of the problem of the similar kind. So which you have in assignments and generally this gives you the understanding how you use science formula uh, for, you know, related to, uh, related to how you survive formula related to, you know, derivation. Um, you survive formula formula. Russell is asking the basic book for acoustics. And well, there, there are a number of books actually, but I think I've given you some of them. There's a very good book by Jerome D. Krug. Should we write it? Uh, is there the reference that mm -hmm. I've given in the original? Okay, Jerome D. Krug. Okay, I, I will write it here in the comments. Yeah, Jerome J.D. Krug. Then there is a book by uh, Foreman. No need. No need. I don't know. Jerome D. Kroom. J.D. Kroom. Noise. People and something like that. The building. The no, no, book, uh, we have given in the reference. Ah, yes, J.D. Kroom. We have given in the reference. And uh, if you are looking qualitative things. If you are looking at qualitative things. If you are looking at qualitative. The qualitative D. Um, you know, number of books are there by this gentleman, particularly you know, the fire book which I was using, the quality book, David Egan. David Egan has also has a very nice book uh, on architectural acoustics, I mean acoustics, also quality. But, uh, you know, if you are looking from some understanding, physics of it, Kroom has got a very good book, but it's very thick. And the uh, Foreman book is also good, but I have tried to, to take only 12 lectures out of this. You can have a course on acoustics, so I have tried to take only 12 lectures out of this. The equation that I have used mostly from either Kroom, Foreman, and some of them are very basic. Like science formula is very basic, you find in almost anything. So that's it. Thank you, thank you.
Yes, sir. 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 Y
one. I think we'll solve one more problem. No question so far? So no, there will be a Tell them all the code that will be floated next semester also. Let's bring it. But let's take another problem then quickly. Okay. Second question. Yeah, yeah. So the another there's another acoustics question he has put in. A source of a source of a source of sound is ten micro watt. Please explain about cooling load factor in brief. Cooling load factor. Uh, cooling load factor. Uh, in connection with what? What is cooling load factor? Or is it the cooling load you want to know? What is cooling load? Because we did we didn't discuss about uh, active system. So generally, uh, you know, we didn't discuss about the HVAC. All that we have discussed in this course is how to calculate out, let's say, uh, you know, amount of energy that is to be either withdrawn or amount of energy that is to be supplied. So the amount of energy that is to be withdrawn at a given point of time from the building, that's what we are calling as cooling load. But machine load will be different anyway, so that we are not talking about. So we are talking about the cooling load, you know, hourly cooling load or hourly amount of energy that is to be withdrawn from the system, that's what we are talking about. So uh, this is what it is. Now how do we find it out? See, at, basically at a given time, given time instead, uh, the, the, there's, you know, there's six, five, six component of uh, heat transfer into the building. Number one, you have conduction heat transfer through the opaque surfaces, uh, which if it is receiving radiation, then uh, you must take the effect of radiation onto the external wall surface also, which will absorb some heat and transmit it later on. So one thing is through the conduction through the opaque body, because of temperature difference existing within the room and outside, and also because of the radiation falling onto those opaque surfaces. Now that is taken care of simply by UA into delta T, the steady part, and the unsteady part, if you look at it, it would be mu U A temperature swing above the mean. You know, if you have gone to that experiment, I mean, the equations, those are there. So the physically, these are the two components. We look into the, if the temperatures are, divide the total heat conduction into two parts. One is the steady part, as if the mean is constant, inside and outside mean which are constant. So heat transfer due to the mean and heat transfer due to any fluctuation above the mean outside that we take care through a term called decrement factor, amplitude decrement and its phase lag, time lag, how much later it will be seen. And this you can also do for the radiation being received on opaque surfaces. Because radiation received now, it will come much later if it is fluctuation. Mean, you know, mean, mean radiation, if I take it, so I mean radiation, you know, corresponding to that, there's a mean temperature rise outside. That would cause the, I can consider it to be constant and take the steady part of it. So we have divided into two parts in the method that I have discussed, steady and transient and calculated separately. There are other methods, numerical methods like finite elements, finite elements, or a time domain, response. We talked about frequency frequency domain response. So physically these two components, the conduction component. Then there's a component of direct gain to the glasses. So if a glass area, direct gain would occur. They, you know, if the, if the solar radiation is falling into the glass, it will just get transmitted. And that we have talked in terms of AI theta, where theta is the solar gain factor. And then uh, conduction through glass also you can take. Conduction like, like as you take in case of open plan. Besides that, there are some heat transfer due to ventilation. Ventilation, there's some heat transfer due to ventilation, right? So ventilation heat transfer 
to take into account. It could be if the air changes are constant, then it is taken in a simple manner. If the air changes are varying, then hourly variation is another variable that's added. So you solve 25 by 25 matrix and all. But I'm not going to the matrix part of it. But I'm right now only talk, talk, talking to you related to physical way. So ventilation, heat transfer can take place. And who should be? Again, you know, the air that outside air comes in, it replaces some of the inside, I mean, inside air. And it requires outside air at higher temperature. If it is at higher temperature, it will bring in some heat because thus this this will acquire the inside room temperature. So as it acquires the inside room temperature, that much heat will be absorbed by the room. So that has to be removed. So that adds to the cooling room. So one is the conduction, direct radiation, and the ventilation heat transfer. Besides that, there are people, human beings. Metabolic heat will be generated, that will call as casual heat gain, right? Also appliances, supposing you have a, you have a, uh, some sort of a, you know, kitchen, then it is, it will be some sort of, uh, let's say, a microwave, which, will, which consumes some amount of energy, or a heater. So these are casual heat gain. I think these are the major mode of heat transfer. So through this, we calculate every hour, how much is the heat? that is required to be removed if I want to maintain a constant temperature. That's itself is a cooling room. Did I leave any component out from there? So we have taken, we have talked about conduction, two effect body, transparent body, and then ventilation with transfer, then direct gain, direct you know, radiation coming in, and casual heat gain. Is there anything else? Any, is there anything else uh, I just left out? Uh, I, think, I think that's all, that's all. So that's that's what is the you know cooling room. Now, I have not really talked about any factor. I just told how to calculate this out. Given the outside air temperature, design temperature is known to you, you know, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. That's what it is. So uh, I think if there is any any specific factor you have, mind just let me know. What is thermodynamic double beating? Wait, but temperature. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, uh, I'm not very sure whether I did talk about that. You see, uh, wet bulb temperature is a temperature. Uh, you know, if I if I uh, I can calculate it out, right? By one is a measurement. Which what you do in that case? You have a whirling hygrometer or some kind of hygrometer. You know, where you find out, or it's a thermometer, its bulb is covered with wet honey bag, or I mean wet, wet jute or whatever it is, and there's a depression. So depression from the dry bulb temperature. That is the wet bulb depression. Corresponding temperature, I call it wet bulb temperature, right? That's the, as the measurement. Now when I am saying thermodynamic wet bulb temperature, that is basically the one that you can calculate out theor theoretically. What is actually happening? From the, you know, there's a the latent heat transfer is taking place. So it is in a saturated condition. Surface is in a saturated condition, and at that condition, there will be a heat transfer. Uh, there will be, yeah, there will be, you know, there will be a. Uh, share it. Yeah. Share it. Yeah, so this is actually a diabetic situation. So basically, uh, the heat will come to the bulb as H, let's say area of the bulb is, or area of the surface is A, right, into Tw minus Td minus Tw, because dry bulb temperature will be always higher. So that will be H, if it's convective heat transfer is taking place on the surface, right? 
So H is the convective heat transfer coefficient. That must be equals to latent heat multiplied by delta G. Right? Latent is the amount of moisture evaporating from the same area. So I can, using this kind of an heat balance equation, I can find out Tw in an adiabatic situation. Right? So this is uh, this is in joules per kg. This is as the moisture changes, quantity changes, moisture evaporation taking. You know, if I know the delta G change, moisture content changes, how much moisture content is changing. So then from that I can calculate out if I can set uh, when I calculate this out, assuming an adiabatic condition, the wet bulb temperature I can calculate out, and that would be uh thermodynamic wet bulb. So is it uh, is, is this equation all right? I mean to delta G. I do not know whether I have covered this in this this course. No, very sure. Yeah, yeah, this is not I didn't cover this, but anyway, this is so this is in k kilojoules or joules per kg. 2501 we take actually. Uh, so joules per kg, that's for air. Sorry. I know let on it of evaporation we take around 2500. So 2500 uh, kilojoules per kg, and is the um, delta G is the amount of moisture change per unit volume wear, etc. etc. So when I write the heat balance equation, I can find out. So that's that would be, you know, assuming an adiabatic situation, I can find out the wet bulb temperature. That's actually thermodynamic wet bulb temperature. What's about also about adiabatic saturation? What is adiabatic saturation? Yeah, yeah. So that's actually one should go into psychrometric chart, you know. Uh, I can erase it or first let it be here. Let me erase this out. Erase this out. Erase this out. That gives you a better feeling. As if I'm working on the blackboard, right? <laughs> so, so this is your this is your psychrometric chart. This is the saturation curve. This is the zero. You know, this line corresponds to the, this side is your G moisture content or uh, vapor pressure. Also, you can so this side is absolute, the simplest, and this side is dVT. And this line corresponds to zero percent moisture content. This saturation. So, what is the question actually? Uh, what is adiabatic saturation? Yeah, adiabatic saturation would be see if we are, if I have, you know it's this temperature, this dry bulb temperature, this is the moisture content. So, any point here would actually within the psychrometric chart, you know, it's the psychrometric chart is essentially the graph between these two. So, any point here would represent the moisture content of the air and most dry bulb temperature of the yeah, so adiabatic saturation would be that I am not supplying any heat from outside, right? And it goes towards this direction, it moves towards such full saturation. So basically, uh, what will happen if I am, you know, if if I am actually, um, basically, if I am uh, supplying moisture, say in this case, in this temperature, I spray, let's say, water. Now this water will absorb such that it absorbs water from the air itself. Absorbs, you know, the air, air itself. So air temperature will go down. So dry bulb temperature will go down, but its moisture content will increase. So when it goes in this direction, and I reach this line, where dry bulb temperature is reduced, but it has also reached a saturation point without any heat supply from outside. For example, a desert cooler. If you are from North India. Uh, you know, composite monsoon climate or hot, dry desert climate, then people were using earlier what is called a desert cooler. Now, that's an adiabatic, adiabatic situation where the dry air is blown by, an, you know, by, by, by I mean, dry air is blown by some sort of a fan which will pull the air from outside, and there is a water spray. Water is actually sprayed through what you call kush uh, kush, you know, like. Very basic, basically, I, I do not know what English word is, but it's a kind of a straw made board sort of thing through which water can percolate, drip down. So, when the dry air comes in contact with the water, it absorbs the heat from it, loses some heat, you know, and water, water, it absorbs the water from the water from the that you know, dripping down, dripping down water, the moisture vapor from the dripping down water, and its temperature gets reduced. Really so this is a purely a different situation, and its temperature comes down, but its moisture content increases. And supposing I am able to achieve the 
saturation moisture content, fully saturated, then it would be reaching that adiabatic saturation. Right? Although I think this was not part of my course. This time. And somebody is asking that besides solution to the assignments, if you could give us some more worked out examples, maybe in the form of snapshot from any book, it would be of great help for me. Well, the basic problem is there are no single book on the subject and uh, there are not problems. All these problems have been generated by me over last 20, 30 years, maybe one or two from books, but majority I have generated. So uh, if we see if we can pass on some some sort of example, I'm not sure, but some questions uh, we can pass on, maybe we'll try to do that because I have a large question bank. So we'd like to pass on some example questions, some, you know, some example questions, right? That I can do, which you can solve yourself. Um, if you, after solving, if you find, or while solving, if you find difficulties, you can just, you know, communicate to us that this is where I got stuck. We'll actually solve us, you know, give a solution to you. So that's, that's it. Because this level of this code, you see, there are, there are books on acoustics, detailed books. The books on um, uh, energy efficient building design or energy, you know, transfer, heat transferring buildings. There are books on them. And there are books on, some books on daylighting too, or lighting. But then when we have looked into, we try to make a kind of a first level course. I'll not say it's a second level course. It's first level course, but the physics is involved. So therefore, slightly less descriptive that is it it's not a big deal at all but it's a generally first level course trying to compile everything so questions are not available really readily available many of them i have formulated over the years myself so we'll try to pass on some sure okay 57 minutes have been completed okay so would you please differentiate between short wave absorbity absorptivity and long wave emissivity sure i'll do that you see it's like this uh, next, next page. Mm -hmm. like, huh? Okay, now it's like this. You see, what happens is uh, sun radiates at very high temperature, million degrees. So the spectrum of, you know, if you see the spectrum. Uh, the solar radiation is from uh, UV radiation, ultraviolet to infrared, infrared, you know, ultra UV to in you know, a large band or the frequencies in which it radiates. And some of them are relatively, you know, they can, since high energy, short wave actually. So, the quality of the radiation is a function of temperature. So at that high temperature, sun radiates shortly. So in, you know this this would be the spectrum would be somewhere around the visible is somewhere around 360 nanometer to 700 and something you know nanometers and all that, right? Somewhere around that, yeah. So beyond that also there is heat heat radiation. So that's what comes from sun. So sun's radiation, their wavelength is less and their short wave. Now. The absorption and emissivity at a given wavelength, of course, is same for any body, but they are different for different wavelengths. So our terrestrial bodies, which absorbs and absorbs the short wave radiation, gets heated up. The bodies in the in the earth, they absorb this radiation and gets heated up. Then they start radiating to elsewhere, which are at lower temperature. You know transmitting the heat to radiation to temperature, for example, in the night, in the outer cosmos, which is much cooler. Now, since the earth or earthly bodies radiate at much lower temperature, they actually radiate long wave radiation. They actually radiate long wave radiation. So they are all heat radiation. You don't see the radiation going out from the any hot surface. You know, many of this hot surface, uh, you can feel the warmth of a wall sometime in summer time uh, again depending upon which wall it is and uh, you'll find that it is you can feel the heat but don't see the radiation so that's 
not visible portion, but some infrared heat wave radiation. So at low temperature, the heart, ready, you know, it's, it emits long wave radiation. Now, long wave emissivity is important for us. So we'd like it to lose as much as long wave absorptivity will be similar values, but I'm not interested in that. While short wave absorptivity I'm interested in, the alpha value we denote by alpha, I don't want this absorptivity to be high. So if it's for a wall, you know, if it is white colored, that has got a short wave absorptivity pretty low, could be of the order of around 0.4, but long wave emissivity of the order of 0.9 emissivity. So I am bothered about long wave emissivity, which should be high, and short wave absor absorptivity, which should be low. So this is the difference between the two. While radiating out, the earthly bodies all radiate long wave. While receiving the sun's radiation, it is all short wave. So that's, that's it. Right, that's it. Hmm? 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 I mean, we finished our time. Uh, if you have specific questions and you are solving those problems and find specific questions, please do email to us. We'll try to answer them. But then uh, questions like, you know, uh, the industry, it is not used in industry. Well, it may not be. I'm not very sure. The academics cannot follow the industry. It's the other around. So such question, uh, you know, it's all discussion. I mean, uh, one can have debate on those, but I'm not interested in those ones. But if you have, some questions, trying to solve and not able to, or trying to you know, answer, do some assignments, not able to do it, please communicate to us. We'll do the needful and communicative back. We'll try to put in some questions. You know, did you note it down that somebody wanted some questions to be uh, additional questions for solving? That will do. That will do. You know, we'll put some sense. Not sure. Right? That will do. So, any other question coming by? No, no. No, then, thank you very much. Those uh, 11 viewers, thank you very much for coming. And, uh, right, we'd like to like to answer all your queries. Thank you very much. As long as it is, you know, subject. Okay. Thank you.